Hello everybody, today we have a super interesting interview with Mordechai, who is the owner and the CEO of Ecom Hunt. How are you today, Mordechai? I'm good, I'm good. Thank you very much for uh, inviting me for this interview. I'm looking forward for the questions. <laughs> cool. So first, thanks for coming. Um, and let's start with uh, some information about your, yourself. How did you come into dropshipping and in general, who are you? Yes, yeah, so uh, basically bef way before dropshipping, I was uh, an entrepreneur uh, doing a startup in the mobile applications. I had uh, a dating app, um, which was uh, kind of a mix between uh, Tinder and Instagram. We launched it, uh, I think 2013 was the year of launch. And uh, after uh, three or four years, uh, we had a really successful uh, uh, path. So we got to maybe if I recall, it was a long time ago, I think uh, 3 million uh, uh, downloads on the app. And at some point I had to do some kind of a, a pivot in my, uh, in my journey because uh, uh, as many people already know, I'm married with uh, kids. So I had to find a way to make uh, extra income from the side while doing the startup. So this is basically the first time when I got into uh, online marketing and trying to sell anything online. And I recall a friend of mine telling me like, there is this uh, new thing online, people are making money with it. It's, uh, it's uh, selling t-shirts online. It's called the uh, print on demand. Back in the days, it was uh, Teespring. So I kind of uh, investigated this uh, all uh, niche and I found out that all you have to do is to design a t-shirt uh, to a specific audience, send traffic and you make sales. Now it sounds easy, but uh, trust me, it's not that simple. I lost, uh, I think, $5,000 on testing different uh, t-shirts. Um, and eventually, uh, I met someone on Facebook. He was a very generous person. He told me, like, hey, I have this uh, Facebook group. I will help you make sales on this print-on-demand niche. In exchange, you will sign up using my uh, affiliate link on Teespring. So it can make a profit when I'm making profit, which is a win-win situation because it doesn't hurt what I win. So I jump on the offer and he stood, he stood behind his word and from the first week uh, using his methods and uh, practices, I could make sales. And a few weeks later, I made my uh, first uh, five figures uh, uh, winning product using uh, print on demand on Teespring. And yeah, so that's pretty much the, the, the start, how I got to drop shipping and uh, what I did before. And I also have background in uh, website development and uh, graphic design. And this is what I did before being an entrepreneur and uh, before the army and everything, like from really young age. And yeah, that's pretty much it, man. Well, it was a Shopify store or a private store? How it no, it's, it, it was still before the stores. I think that um people were just getting started to hear about shopify and about uh, uh this dropshipping concept where you can um sell products from aliexpress on your private store so it was kind of just the beginning so before that there were no stores you just add like this uh, uh campaign page over the teespring website or other platforms so you don't really own a store you just sell from those uh, from their website cool and from there, how did you come into the Shopify niche? Yeah, so just after uh, selling t-shirts for a while, uh, a friend of mine sent me a message and told me like, hey, I have this uh, uh, huge neck thing. It's called uh, Shopify. I cannot give you the details now. I need to test it. And I will give you info in uh, two weeks if it's working or not. And believe it or not, he sent me a message after a few days. He didn't wait even uh, two weeks and he sent me a few days later, man, this is uh, a gold mine. This thing is amazing. It's, go it's gonna explode and you must uh, tap into it right now before it's too late. So I left everything behind me and started to do drop shipping on uh, Shopify. And I remember that the first product I did were uh, jewelry. We we're selling uh, necklaces and bracelets uh, from AliExpress. And it was just amazing. Like it's, it was so simple to, to, to send traffic to a store and make sales back then. But we had many other problems that now we don't have. So it's kind of a, it's kind of a balance. How much time did it take you to uh, make your first sale on uh, Shopify? Well, that's actually not a fair uh, uh, 
question for beginners because uh, when I started doing Shopify and dropshipping, I had already a huge background uh, experience using uh, Facebook ads to send traffic to my t-shirts campaign. So when I started selling on Shopify, it, it wasn't something new. It was just a different channel to, to make sales. So um, when I did it, it took me like one day, like the first day I launched the ads, the second day after I already had one or two sales. So cool. yeah. Uh, I wish it to everyone who starts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Today it's not the situation. I can vouch for it that today on my stores, um, it doesn't happen like that. Like sometimes it takes uh, a week until we get to a, a profitable campaign. It's uh, it's been really hard now with the competition and everything. So we still run a stalls even today when you during the e command. Yeah, yeah. So. The stores we are running right now, they're not like the, the, the big stores that you see online, the five or six or seven figures uh, kind of stores to, you know, it's not like the, the big deal. Uh, my main focus is almost everything on the uh, e-com hunt. And one of the things that we do on e-com hunt is to run stores just to, to stay always, you know, with, uh, with the market. Yeah, you know, you want to you wanna always stay with the market. You always want to know what's happening right now. So we're doing store, stores just to always stay up to date and know what's working and what's not working, trying uh, different methods on uh, Facebook and uh, targeting and basically just to, to always be on top of the, the, the industry and the changes that happens on uh, Facebook and on shipping times and AliExpress and etc. So we're not really focused on building uh, a successful store with customers and everything. We're just only focused on always being up to date. And if in, even if we have like a huge winner, we'll probably not even try to scale it, just make it a few sales, just to test the, the, the water and move on um, to the next one. Cool. Um, so uh, if you already mentioned the e-command, so let's talk about what, what is e-command? Uh... Yeah. So. E-command in, uh, in its journey, it's been like, uh, I think a bit, almost three years or a bit more. Um, E-command started as a product research tool and slowly became like your one-stop shop where you do everything regarding Shopify dropshipping. So you go to E-command, you find a product and then what you do. So at some, when we started, this is all we had, like find a product and that's it. And, Today, we give um, so much more. We are teaching our audience, our customers, how to sell online, how to drop ship. We have uh, courses, we have a free one, we have a paid one. Um, we have many new features, many new tools to help you even uh, dig more in the products and find better opportunities when it comes to uh, finding winning products. And obviously, we have a huge uh, community with over uh, 70, uh, yeah, with over 70,000 uh, members on Facebook and people are sharing their their experience their questions and we are here to help and make the the and make the the most possible to help you and uh, uh basically to help our users to make uh, sales online and to have a successful drop shipping store but um just before i continue to <laughs> was that, uh, just before i to continue talking about e-command i just want to mention that e-command was uh, originally started in a uh, uh, 2017 around uh, March, March and April, March and April, and it all started by just trying to solve a personal problem that I had. So I I was like searching products every day, like most of the dropshippers, and the problem was that when I find winning products, I just click the save button on Facebook or just throw them in some kind of a sh Google sheet or something, and you always forget about them. So a week later, two weeks later, you already forgot about the products that you wanted to test. Oh, you have so many products now that you would never be able to test. And you already forgot which one is better to test now or, or less. So I created uh, Ecom Hunt just to have some kind of a website, a personal website, a favorite uh, products website where I can jump in, type in my uh, product details and pictures and basically prepare all the research for myself before I'm actually going to test it. So the, when the day comes and I want to test this product, I already have a page with all the research ready to go. 
And after I built it, I've added about uh, 30 products or maybe, uh, yeah, 30, 35 products to the website. The website looked so good that I was like, man, I need to show this to a few friends of mine. And this is what we did. Um, I sent it to, um, I posted on Facebook on Hawaii. I think that people can still find this post. I wrote it, like I have this cool uh, software and I'm now opening it for better users. And I need uh, 50 people to test my product and uh, to test e-command basically and tell me what they think about it. And after sharing this product to 50 people, one month later, I checked my uh, users database and I was amazed to find out that we had almost a thousand uh, signups on the website. So it went super viral. We didn't use any paid traffic or anything. It was 100% uh, free to use. And this is basically when the, um, you know, this is when it all started. I saw that this is a huge potential. And so I went all in. And from that, that moment, I like was 100% committed to uh, e-command and making it like a huge uh, deal and making it the next uh, big platform for dropshippers to, to start. So that's your uh, main focus today, only e-command. Yeah, we, we could say that. We could say that, that the focus now is uh, e-command and we have like huge plans and big features that are coming up. And I think that um, in difference than other uh, gurus or, or people that teach online how to dropship or doing that kind of stuff is that uh, with e-command, it's like a win-win situation because if I teach my users how to sell online and make profit online, they will keep their... Uh, uh, they will keep using e-command, which is a win-win. So I have no interest in selling them stuff and making profit by selling them courses or, or, or stuff like that. So everything is like 100% authentic. We're giving real value. We're teaching like the real stuff that actually work right now uh, when you're trying to drop ship anything online. So this is one, one thing that's very important. The second one, um, I'm a drop shipper and my team uh, most of my team members are dropshippers themselves. Uh, some of them are six-figure sellers. Some of them are five-figure sellers. And what we do here is basically translating all of the pain, all of the problems that we face when we were dropshipping and even today when we dropship. And we actually build the solution to those problems. And I think that this is also uh, a, key, uh, a key factor uh, if you compare uh, e-command with other softwares. So... I think that our main goal would be one to, uh, like you said, all about e-command and everything. But I think that the bigger goal here is that we are all focused on improving the dropshipping world and making it even easier to, to, to get started and easier to sell and easier to run a successful Shopify store. Okay, cool. So uh, I have a question and I hope that it's fine, but... And the products on your site, where they are coming from? Like, do yeah, do so it manually, is it a tool? How does it work? Yeah, so the, the famous, uh, the famous uh, e-commerce became famous because of uh, its uh, manual research. When uh, my team of researchers will search every single day for the top trending products, the top products that are now the best option for you to sell. So we still have this team in place. We're still doing this every single day and research uh, from lists of hundreds of products until we find those uh, two or three products that we upload to the website. So what we upload, it's like the best of the best from huge lists. And we also, uh, and back in the days when we started, we we're building this list uh, manually. Uh, today, we also have the manual research and we also have um, like backend softwares that scans uh, Shopify stores, it scans uh, AliExpress, we scan Google. So we are doing a lot of uh, um, um, automated research as well. And we are building, building huge databases of products and stores. And now it's not open to the public, but at some point it's already a plan. So it's uh, a sneak a peek to a future uh, feature that we'll be launching. You will, our users will be able to just go inside and search this huge database, like a, you could say like a Google of, uh, of products. So it will be open uh, soon to the users, but for now we just keep it for ourselves. 
until it's ready. Super cool. Um, how, can you say how many products users can access right now on your site? Yeah, so now we have 2,000, 2,500 products on the website and it's a growing every day. This is the end picked products, but on each product, we have a tool we call Saturation Inspector. And if you click on it, you will be able to see uh, stores that are currently selling the, the, the product we just uploaded. And you will be also able to see all of the products that those stores have on their stores. So from each product on e-command, you can be exposed to, hover, to hundreds of products. And it's just a few clicks, like it's two clicks and you have hundreds of products more to search on. Cool. Um, okay. Let's talk about some things that uh, will be interesting for beginners. Um, what is a good uh, product for you? Can you give us some uh, criteria that you would check when you search for a product to upload? Yeah, so I think that a good product is a product that one, is not easy to find in stores. So it's always good to have a product that is not available in the market below your apartment. I think that this is the first criteria. Um, the second one will be the wow effect. I really like to use it because uh, when I when I watch Facebook ads, I see that the ads that are actually working are those ads that has this uh, wow effect. And when I say wow effect is basically something that I didn't explain, uh, something that I didn't expect to happen. So for example, um, if we take the, the, the new iPhone, when we had like one camera behind and then they launched a, a version with three cameras so this was the wow effect because when you first watch it it's like okay it's the same iphone like always but then it spins around and you see that it has like three cameras and this is when you have this wow effect so the wow effect is basically giving uh in your product that you're selling an angle that surprises the customer so for example, you can, if you're selling like a mug, there was this cool mug when you, you watch it and it's like just a normal mug, but then it pours hot water in it and it changes color and then you see a different uh, design on the glass. So this is also a wow effect because you didn't expect, you didn't expect that to happen. And this is the emotion that makes people want to buy the products. So if you want a product that has this Tiny feature, even if it's really small, that makes people go, wow, like I didn't expect that. That's probably a good product to try and test. And and the product should be something that really solves a problem or you think that people are just buying emotionally and it doesn't really matter? Well, I, I think that that's, this is just another uh, type of a product that you can sell online. Like there are products that are solving problems though. So there's a... Uh, our, uh, painkillers and uh, stuff to help you uh, uh, cure your back or posture corrections. You know, some there are many products that are just simple products that solve a problem that are maybe easier to sell. But most of these products are the, the most attractive products. So a lot of people will search for solving problems when they try to sell online. So if you choose this product, it will be really competitive. But if you go for products that are wow effect, it's kind of, uh, they will have less competition and will be easier to scale to the broad market because usually they are broader uh, in the interest. It's not like a specific niche because they're not solving a specific problem. They're more like of a, a broad kind of a, a product. And also you can find mix between them. You can find products that are solving a problem that also have this uh, wow effect that I'm talking about. That's cool. And uh, from your experience, experience, what works better now, or like what what do people mostly do? Uh, once one uh, product stores or general stores with more products? Yeah. So, um, that's a that's a, like a, <laughs> a debate I hear all the time in the dropshipping uh, 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 industry that people love to ask this question because it's it's a really confusing question actually because. Some people say that they had huge success in doing only one product store. And on the other end, you see like uh, big famous names like uh, the Tan brothers that are doing general stalls and they are crushing it. Like they're already past nine figures. So you don't really know what, what, is right, what is right and what is wrong. And I think that the right answer to this question is that there is 
um, no, um, like there is no answer basically. If if you think that uh, if you better if you want to do a general store and you know what you're doing, so you will probably have success doing general stores. And if you know what you're doing and you go for one product store, you would have success as well. Um, one thing that is important is one product stores are more expensive to make and to launch because you need to spend more time on building them. And if it fails, you need to just delete all the store and try a new one. And this kind of stuff are more expensive. And usually when you do one product store, you are more attached emotionally to your one product store and to the product. So when you will test it on Facebook, you will probably invest more money on ads before killing the entire store because you, you're emotionally connected to this uh, one product store. When in general stores, um, the conversion may be lower, but it's easier to move from one product to a different product when you're testing. So it's really, really fast. Like you're, you're selling a lot of time on testing those products. The, down, the downfall here on the general store is that when you test a product and it fails, you will not giving another a second opportunity. You will give up really fast because you have this uh, 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 mindset of going fast from a product to a product. And this is also a wrong thing to do sometimes because you need to test a bit more on a product. When you see good stats, you need to have a different creative and uh, uh, different targeting. You need to do um, uh, different stuff before giving up on that product. So when doing one product store, you would give up too late. And when doing general store, you give up too early. So uh, I think both of them are, have their pros and cons. So it's just, just a matter of experience. And I think that uh, it's a matter of a style. Uh, what kind of a dropshipper you are? Are you like the dropshipper who prefers to do general stores or the dropshipper who goes for uh, a more branded way, a more uh, uh, selling like one product and focusing on that one product store? See, that's a really interesting uh, approach to this uh, problem, like to this question. Uh, I also have uh, this a lot. Um, and uh, yeah, so it's basically just the style of the paper. Uh, interesting. Okay. Um, what what uh, is the average product price and average product margin that uh, you would recommend for beginners to start with? Well, I, I like to say all the time that when you just getting started dropshipping, the most important thing is to make sales. And people, when I say this, people say like, obviously you want to make sales because you want to make money. When beginners approach this, uh, uh, this questions and like what they should sell and how much money they should charge for it, I think that this is uh, the most important uh, part in dropshipping. And the answer I always like to give is just make sales. This is the most important thing when you start in dropshipping. Now, most people, when they hear me answer this question, they will say like, obviously I want to make sales. So what's the new big thing about your answer? What I'm saying is that you don't have to be profitable when you're making those sales. It's just in a kind of a, a, a motivation booster, you know, something that makes you feel better about yourself and about your uh, self confidence. So what I'm telling people when they ask me this question is like, price your product really low if you just get it started. Don't think about making profit. Don't think about uh, uh, making money. Just be focused on making sales. And it would be easier if you price your product really low. Even if the margin is like almost nothing, it would give you uh, a good feel, a good vibe. You will see your phone. You will see that you made sales. It will give you motivation to continue because you will see that it's actually working and you can actually make sales online. While all the dropshippers will price their products like every uh, other seller and they will advertise their uh, products on Facebook and they will not make any sales. And after doing that for a week, two weeks, three weeks of failing a product after a product, they will just give up. They will say like, this is a, a scam. This is entire, this entire industry is a, is a BS. It's, it's not real and you cannot make profit from it. Other people that didn't make any profit made sales and they have like more motivation and they will continue testing and continue doing stuff. And slowly they will understand how the Facebook works, how to read the information. And in the meanwhile, they are collecting also customers that bought from their store, which they can use again to market. They can send them emails, they can send their SMS, they can do uh, retargeting ads to sell them even uh, more products and other products. And this is when they will become profitable. So. In my opinion, when, if you're just getting started, don't try to price your product like everyone else. 
lower your price. If it costs $5 on AliExpress, price it on your store for, I don't know, $9, $8. Like even if it's super low margin, don't think about it. Just be focused on making those sales. Okay, that's uh, really interesting because you say that if someone's starting to get sales, the motivation will come and then also the success, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Cool. Um, on uh, Ecom Hunt, do you help uh, people to uh, find uh, Facebook audiences to target? Yeah, exactly. So uh, on each product page on e-command, we give you suggestions about which targeting you should uh, uh, try when selling this product. Now, one big tip, and this is something we also say in the uh, video that we're teaching targeting on e-command, don't just copy paste what we give you because majority of people do that and it's just wrong. What you want to do is to look at these targeting suggestions that we give you and try to pivot, try to uh, squeeze it down to find better stuff. So if you type those interests on the Facebook and you would kick the tiny arrow, you would get suggestions for Facebook for different interests, but on the same niche. And this will help you to dig in and find uh, better targeting and better audiences. So what we give you just is just an advice, just a, 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 an image of what a good targeting will look like and what you should go for, like, which is the, what is the right direction when you're targeting this product? Because many people sometimes target stuff that are not even related to the product. So we are giving them the path. And then from that point, they need to add their own uh, uh, angle to the targeting to tap into uh, untapped audiences to sell this product. Great, so you, what do we give in the ads though? You give like copy images or? How it looks like you know, we, we don't we don't really like to uh, go with details in uh, uh, in this stuff because the all the all the all goal of dropshipper the all goal of uh, selling online is to build yourself ground up it's the goal here is to 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 the users to learn actually what to do and not just copy paste because copy paste is not working guys it's uh, it's a myth if you're selling if you're seeing people that sell you courses about copy paste my uh, method and it will work it doesn't work what works is you need to learn what is dropshipping you need to learn what is facebook ads you need to learn how to do stuff in order to make them work for you you can learn from other strategies that people are doing test them but you always need to know what you're doing. Like copy paste without understanding would just make you lose money and you will not get anywhere. So you need to, to build your own path, your own style, your own way of doing drop shipping. And this is, I think, uh, one of the most, in, most important stuff when you, when you drop ship. Um, being said uh, that, I think that also if you wanna, if you want to see on uh, e-command, you do have um, ads, you do have uh, uh, example of a winning ad on ad Facebook. And the goal when we do it is not to show you like, hey, this is working, copy the same thing. It's uh, again, it's, it's a way to show you what's working and to help you think about creating something similar. So it works again, again for you, you know, it's not like uh, see this, it's working, copy it. It will not work. It's a waste of time, guys. If you want to make it work, you need to watch what's working and then recreate it with a different angle. So different angle would be maybe to shoot new videos. It will be uh, trying different targeting. It will be changing the text on the video, trying to mesh it up, maybe begin with a different uh, um, part of the video and then move on to a different one. So it will be really to try stuff and not just copy paste because uh, copy paste is not working. And also um, Facebook is really smart. So if you just upload the same video of Facebook, we know this video already exists in their database and you will pay more expensive uh, ads. So the exposure will be more expensive. The CPM will be higher. And basically your ad performance will be much more expensive because this ad is already old and it will not perform like it should be if it's a brand new ad. Okay. Interesting. Um, so, a uh, few last questions before we uh, finish the interview. Um, do you consider uh, Ecom Hunt as a tool only for Shopify dropshippers or for eBay dropshippers too? 
Well, when uh, when we first started doing drop, uh, when we first started doing a uh, ecom hunt, uh, we we're focusing only on uh, Shopify, and this is pretty much what we do today as well. We are almost one hundred percent focused on the Shopify audience and uh, um, drop shipping with uh, Shopify. But I can say that that anyone can use ecom hunt. It's not like a software that was. Uh, that is only for Shopify because what we do there is sharing winning products. Now, something cool that I saw someone do is uh, I saw a course about eBay that it showed them how to make uh, uh, sales on eBay with products from Ecom Hunt. Now, what he found out is when products are trending on the Shopify stores, people are going to eBay and they tap the name of the product and try to find the same product on eBay because they think they will find it cheaper from the Shopify store. So what he did is go to e-command and each time we upload new products that are now trending, he would simply upload them to the eBay, uh, to his eBay store and generate organic sales without doing anything. So he would just uh, ride the, 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 the wave, you know, of the other stores that are spending money on ads to make those sales organically on eBay. So. Yeah, obviously you can use e command for anything. You can use it for Amazon, you can use it for eBay, you can use it for whatever you want because the start point is we offered you products that are proven to sell. So if you want to know what's selling, what's working, this is where you go. You go to e command and you find proven to sell products. That's interesting. It's a very interesting story. Interesting how it worked for him. Yeah. And, um, so what do you think about the future of the dropshipping? How the dropshipping will look five years from now, for example? Well, uh, my guts tell me that dropshipping is changing into a more uh, legit um, kind of industry because now it's kind of a gray, it's somewhere in between the white and black hat, you know, it's something in the middle. And many companies are scared from dropshippers. Uh, a good example is PayPal and Stripe. All the payment gateways are scared from dropshippers. Some of them already closed the uh, uh, there is a, a company in Israel that doesn't accept any dropshippers anymore because of the chargeback and disputes and stuff. So it's a, it's kind of a, a gray zone, you know? And what I see in the industry that it slowly becomes more and more authentic, more and more legit. And a good example is PayPal. Um, I actually had a call with them yesterday and they're now uh, launching a new uh, story about dropshippers. Like they're launching uh, content about dropshippers and they have like this, uh, uh, built uh, land page where they actually talk to dropshippers, like they're sending an offer to dropshippers. So they already understood that dropshipping is going to be the next thing and it's turning legit. So I think that what other people, other big companies will do, if they will just do the same. They will start to build uh, more custom stuff to dropshippers to make this even simpler to sell online and easier to get started. Uh, this is the, 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 the market uh, wise, like this is what will happen in big companies, in my opinion. The second thing is that I see that more and more people are trying to be more legit with their business of dropshipping. They kind of, uh, there's kind of a self-education that's happening that people understand that dropshipping is not just an easy way to make money online. It's a real business. This is a real, a real deal. This is a real thing. You can build your future, uh, your financial future on it. So they're taking it more in serious. They're looking to check the product's quality. They shoot videos. They pay for uh, professional pictures. They build homemade studios just to shoot the products. And I think that this is a good thing to drop shipping. And I see the future. I see a brighter uh, future for the, the drop shipping industry. Great. Um, cool. And yeah, we, we also see this trend on all the other drop shippers are becoming more professionals less uh, scammy people really try to build businesses for the long term people are not coming already to make you know like one boom and that's all something that we had also in the past with uh, some different exactly. uh, tricks that people did so it's really cool to see that i agree with you um can you share one last thing uh, that you would recommend to a new dropshipper who just started his uh, journey yeah, so uh, one, one, one tip that crossed my mind right now when you told me this um, is the, 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 the investment part. So 
um, if you're getting started and you didn't like fix a budget, this is uh, a not th good thing to do. You need to, to fix a budget. So if you're going to open an offline business, you already know exactly how much money you would be investing because you need to pay rent, you need to pay uh, inventory, you need to pay employees. So even be before spending this money, you already know what you're going to spend. And this helps you to create some kind of a, a business plan. This helps you to create some kind of a, a picture of what will happen in each scenario. So for example, in the dropshipping world, what I like to do is to say like, okay, I'm just testing this product. I'm going to invest on it $500. What will I do with this $500? Okay, I will um, launch ads for $300. $200 will go for uh, creative, for uh, maybe someone to, to build a store. And basically I, I build my business plan on this $500. And then what I have left, I have like $300 for ads and I will be investing this $300 like it's the last thing I have to do in my life. So I will go to Facebook and I will build smart campaigns and I will check everything in details and try to make the most from this $300 to make it work. And even if it's not working, I know when to stop, you know, because I only said I have like $500, that's it. And if it doesn't work, I would just stand up and go away. I, I would not keep testing this product and lose more money on it. Unless it's giving me positive uh, uh, results. If, uh, maybe if I'm breaking even, I would maybe try to give a bigger budget to test more. But usually when I see that number is not uh, what I'm looking for, I would just move on to the next product. So. The tip is fix a budget before doing anything and build yourself uh, a business plan with uh, what will you do with this $500 and which each dollar you would know exactly what you do. It will help you to create success faster. Amazing. Uh, it's a great tip so people can, uh, can really focus and know that this is what they have and this is what they're working with. Uh, thank you very much for this amazing interview, Mordechai. Uh, it was, I'm sure that it will help to a lot of people. And we will attach a link to your command be below this video or below this podcast. And uh, thank you. Thank you very much for uh, inviting me for this interview. It was uh, a pleasure. Uh, the questions were right on point. I got to say, <laughs> you made me sweat. Uh, at some questions, I had to think about what is the right answer to, to make the most impact when people watch this and um, try to help them the most by just entering uh, a theoretical answer. And guys, if you watch this, don't give up. Uh, some of my answers may uh, make you think it's really hard, but it's a good business to start with. And if you do it smartly and not just gambling money on Facebook, I'm sure that you will see success. So again, thank you very much for inviting me. And I hope that you will find my answers uh, helpful for your dropshipping stores. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.